Hello, everyone. You are tuning in to Grit and Glamour, an interview series featuring honest conversations with fashion change makers to share both the grit and glamour of what it really takes to lead and succeed. I'm your host, Ruby Veridiano, and welcome to another episode of Grit and Glamour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Grit and Glamour. I'm your host, Ruby Veridiano, and thank you for tuning in to this interview series where we feature honest conversations with fashion change makers on what it really takes to lead and succeed. On today's show, I have a special guest by the name of Lamaris Loren. Lamaris is a fashion designer and fashion educator. She has her own label called Lem Loren, and she's also an educator at the International Fashion Academy here in Paris, France, where she teaches courses on textile innovation and sustainable fashion design. And in this conversation, we're going to be talking about the role that fashion designers can play in intentionally designing for change so that we can protect the future of our planet and our people. Lamars is actually based here in Paris normally, but due to COVID, um, unfortunately, she had to stay a little bit longer in her home country in Puerto Rico, where she is streaming in from. So Lamaris, how are you? Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Ruby, for having me today here. I'm such an honor to be here with you and to share my experiences, right? Yes. And yes, I'm supposed to be in Paris because I'm supposed to be uh, teaching, you know, in, <laughs> in Adifa. But yeah. due to the COVID, I, I'm in yeah. Rico. So, so now you're having to teach online. And do, you're yes. on the other side of the homeschooling exactly. uh, journey. Exactly. So exactly. Well, let's get right into it because I'm really excited to share your story and to have my viewers learn from you and your expertise. Um, I'm glad to know that you're safe despite everything. So you're safe yes. and fabulous in uh, Puerto Rico. Um, so to get us started, can you tell us a little bit about your journey from Puerto Rico to Paris? And you know, do you always see yourself living here? Is it something that you expected? Okay, so it's been a, a really long journey during all this time. So basically, I everything started when I opened my first studio atelier in Puerto Rico, in my hometown. So I stayed there for to you know to work in my label, and uh, for almost four years I started designing a slow fashion. Um, slow fashion label but i had a two um um call um pieces like uh what i say that it's like i had a one line like ready to wear line and yeah. the other one was a made to measure that i was you know um based on you know creating um, this type of gala gowns and all this yeah. stuff so but always i had the idea to expand my horizons knowledge and all obviously the labor as well so first i moved to after four years um working in my studio in puerto rico i decided to move to new york city to continue studying so i decided to to study a associate degree in fashion apparel in FIT, it's um, Fashion Institute of Technology. Uh, in the meantime, I started working as a fashion textile, fashion designer textiles, and advisor for mood fabrics. So I was in charge to the silk department. So I was charged in charge to work with Oscar de la Renta, Jason Wu, all this type of, you know, big houses in the United States. And also a parallel of my work in Mood Fabrics, I was working for the CFDA, it's the Council of Design of, of America. So there I was um, working, I was in charge as assistant designer for the fashion incubator, fashion designer, um, Katie Armilio. So I was in charge basically to uh, to create and to fix all the samples of the new co of each new collections, right? Yeah. Um, for Barney's New York that we sold in Barney's New York and Moda Operandi. So after that, after 
I finished in FIT. I started working as a uh, visual designer, visual merchandiser as well for the Gap company, especially mm -hmm. in Banana Republic. So I was in charge for the all the window display for the uh, flagship store in Rockefeller Center. And mm -hmm. also I'm partnership and collaboration with the headquarters in Tribeca. But in that moment, I, I decided like uh, the fashion industry is oversaturated and it's really hard to keep, you know, to keep um, working as uh, about, you know, about um, about your dreams, right? Yeah. So that's the thing that I decided to move on and mm. make it and make it forward. So I decided to apply for a master degree because yeah. I was I had the, I, I had an experience about the fashion business in the United States, but I always dream to move to Europe and especially in Italy. I never thought to you know to to start um, making a career right in yeah. Paris. I learned French in 2009 with the idea like maybe in the future i can you know i can be in paris but i never thought that the uh, destiny let me say like that you know will put me you know in that place so i applied for a master degree it was the first master degree in paris that specialized in contemporary fashion design so because paris is more based in haute couture it's based more in the artisanal process right so in this master, it was more basically how we can connect the fashion history and how how we can um, create, innovate this um, history, this artisanal process into a contemporary design. Yeah. So basically, that was my my main focus to move to Paris, and the rest we can talk. Along yeah, this yeah, we have this whole concept. But really quickly, I want to ask you because I think there's a lot of young people who think that success can come like this, right? Because I think everything happens so fast on social media these days that they think success can just happen overnight. So you've just described this long journey. And actually, mm -hmm. even though you started your journey as a designer, you've had to go back and go to work as a visual merchandiser. You've had to work for other people, not necessarily designing, but doing exactly. other things of the fashion business. So I want to ask you, like, how long was that journey before you moved from, from the time that you opened your atelier to all the way to when you decided to move to Paris? Like, how long have you already been working? I've been working for over, uh, over 12 years. So it's yes. been 12 years working. And like you said, I had to, you know, to embrace my talent in different in different um positions like visual yes. merchandising um, um advisor in and in this tech se textile sector that i never yeah. imagined that i will you know be part of like as a fashion the um, textile as well yeah. so it's been a, a, a really long process but this realized me that with this process um it showed me that to be a real fashion designer, you have to interpret and you have to understand different type of position to be a better professional. Exactly. It's the same with me as a fashion storyteller and as a journalist. And the same thing, like I've had to take on many different mm -hmm. roles, not necessarily just in the fashion industry, but everything makes sense, right? Like exactly. even failures make sense. Exactly. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And um, I think your hard work um, has paid off in several ways. You did get a chance to showcase at uh, Paris Haute Couture Week, which is one of the most prestigious fashion shows in, in the world. So what, how did it feel and what did it mean to you to be able to represent Puerto Rico in an international prestigious platform like that? Well, it was uh, really such an honor to be selected in the Paris Wood Couture Fashion Week um, because um, it was a really um, prestigious judgment, uh, judge. So we, ha we, are, uh, we had like in the, in the classroom, in the master program, we, we, we like, we had like 24 students. So basically they selected 
um, eight and I was one of them. So it was a really, uh, truly honor to be there because it was a really um, challenge. It was very challenging because I was the only Latin American that I, in, in the selected group. So yeah. for me, it was like a representation to show where I come from and who I am as well. So yeah. also it's about like expressing my roots on the wrong way was like a liberation, right? Of fears that unconscious we hold, you know? Yeah. So it was like a liberation of many things like we hold. And it's important that people like me from Latin America present, uh, can be present in these type platforms um, to embrace and offer new fresh idea of our, our cultural expression as well. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is by Oprah Winfrey. And she always says that I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. Right. So we're always an ambassador for our heritage and our culture, no matter where we go. So it's just really exactly. awesome that you're essentially a, an ambassador, a cultural ambassador, um, you know, on the runway. Exactly. Exactly. And this is, I think this is one of the most beautiful parts, not just only to present it's, it's, to be able to to be there and to use your voice as a talent, you know, to yes. show you where where I come from. I think this is one of the most beautiful things. Yeah, and I think it's also an opportunity to show other girls who grew up with uh, with the same background as you to show them what's possible for them. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I know that through your work as a fashion designer, I love that you've combined, you know, your commitment to represent Latin, your Latin American culture, but also your commitment to sustainability. Um, in your point of view, how do those things, how are those things connected and why are they important to you? Yes, I think this is who I am, right? Um, as a brand, we always encourage sustainable practice in our process. Even a few years ago, we hadn't called it sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. Because a um, few years ago, uh, the word uh, the sustainable is the word sustainability. Uh, we didn't hear so much. Now and it's like a bad word. word. It was like, no. oh, sustainable fashion isn't sexy. Exactly, exactly. And but we. We, we didn't hear so much about what is sustainability, but in my studio, in my atelier, we always uh, encourage this type of process, like, you know, how we can um, describe sustainability in maybe a few years ago. So slow fashion, artisanal details, you know, one of the kind, all these type of, um, you know, process are for that time, we call it like that, but now, we embrace all these words in sustainability process and sustainable yeah. process. So because the idea of sustainability have increased in just a few years ago, it's quite interesting, right? How I decided to combine both in my collection. First, when you move in a foreign country, you might be feel like nostalgic. So you might be start missing these tiny moments like mm -hmm. uh, expressions, people, food, yeah, um, every, every, everything. So being the only person in my class from Puerto Rico, it was a huge challenge in all sense. Yeah. So I felt that the most of the people didn't knew where exactly was look it was located Puerto Rico. So for that reason, I was so in shock. Like not yeah. like most of the people didn't know where is Puerto Rico and where is you know Latin America exactly where in the Latin American space you know mm -hmm. part it is. Yeah. So it made me realize that I have a voice and I had to use it to show what is Latin American, right? So yeah. I decided to create my collection inspired in our musical heritage named Bomba. So I call it Yuba because it's a musical heritage originating from the rhythms of afro Puerto Rican music and mm -hmm. dance movements. So yeah. for me, it was, uh, it, it was express my roots that Actually, in Puerto Rico, we don't we don't talk about so much about Afro Puerto Rican descendants. So mm -hmm. I wanted to express that. I wanted to go deeper of this. So in that time, Afro Puerto Rican women used to dance to empower to show who they was. So they used to create their gar garments with the leftovers, leftovers mm -hmm. of the fabric because you know there were like uh, there were like uh, slaves. So. Mm -hmm. In my collection, so I started 
Um, I weave elements from the juba, percussion, driving music, and centuries old heritage to create a contemporary fashion collection unifying the terms of sustainable process and my cultural expression. When I say that, it's like uh, I took this example of um, Afro-Puerto Rican descendants like taking left over to create their garments. So I decided to create the same with recycled fabrics to scraps, you know, from scraps that I started collecting to recreate different type of patterns to create this type of dresses made by recycling fabrics. It may, it, it's almost like a upcycling process, right? But instead of buying dresses, I, I bought some recycled fabrics to create this type of dresses. So this was one of the most biggest challenges because yeah. um, create um, garments, a collection based just only by scraps is a huge challenge because yeah. you have to you have to pair you know different type of fabrics and all the process was very artisanal it was yeah. very it was core with my values as well as a brand because yeah. it was very challenging because one of my mentors right in the in the in the masters uh wasn't aware so much about mm -hmm. my theme and also because um she was from other part of the world, so that basically Puerto Rico and all this cultural um, heritage, uh, she is doesn't sound so much familiar, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a, a huge challenge to express yeah. who I wanted to be in that show, right? Yes. And it, and that's one of the things that I always say to my students that you have to. No matter that if your mentor is agree or not agree with you, you have to listen, but you have to be um, honest with yourself and with your values as a brand. So this yeah. this one of the key elements that will keep you moving forward as a, not just only a creator, also to innovate in this saturated um, industry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love that you described that actually uh, the recycling and the upcycling of garments was actually part of the cultural history already. I think a lot of times when you're looking at the sustainable fashion space, there's a lack of diversity. Um, and so when people look into the, this, the, the industry of sustainable fashion, a lot of the voices don't come from women of color. But actually, women of color, indigenous communities, uh, you know, like even immigrant mothers, they are actually some of the most sustainable women that have really mm -hmm. pioneered this idea of reuse and, and recycling. So I appreciate that that's already part um, of the history that you just reinterpreted to, for contemporary context. Um, so you're, in addition to being a designer, as I said, you are a fashion educator as well. Um, mm -hmm. So you are teaching the next generation of fashion designers, and we are now at a point in our in our uh, time in the, in the industry where sustainability is no longer an option. So social responsibility is no longer an option. It has to be uh, embedded into the company DNA, and there's a lot of need to reform a lot of things because we are changing as a world, and the next generation of consumers, are, their values are also changing, and they have very high demand for transparency. Mm -hmm. So in your work, um, I know that as, as, as in my work also of uh, reporting on fashion designers, I've come to understand that the decisions of sustainability and social responsibility actually start in the design process. Can you help me break down why that is? So first, we have to understand that being sustainable is not just only to create a conscious collection. You know, it's a, it's a way of living. It's more than that, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way how you um, you live in. And it's like, a, it's like a lifestyle, right? And we have to encourage and we, can, we have to embrace that, you know, because the first thing is transparency. 
I think the, the key word of this is transparency means honest. You have to be honest in all your values. You have to be honest in the way you live, the way you project, the way you act with others, the way you design, because all this, all this um, challenge, all this um, process in your life will have a uh, will have a space. You know, we'll have a space on on your design process. That's the thing. So when when we talk about and um, how we can put this um, social um, social issues and sustainable. First of first of all, it's transparency. It's to be honest. Other thing, other thing is take responsibility of your of of your of your values, of your ideas, of your process as well. This is this is really important. And the way you design, you have to innovate. That's the things that we I always say to my students. You have to innovate. You have to take the things that we usually do all the time and don't trash it try to embrace it try to dis redesign it try to use all these materials as well right so it's the first thing of to being honest to take responsibility to try new ways like innovations um on your design process also um the way of of creating materials so take advantage of that you don't need to you know, to I know that we are in a technological, you know, um, industry right now. But take a moment and take that space of your design process to create new ways without this type of technological things that consumes a lot. So mm -hmm. take advantage of your artisanal um, process as well. So it's it's a it's a process that start with yourself to yes, embrace yes. your uh, design process for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as I understand too, the way that you design, you also have to understand what kind of materials will mm -hmm. fit that design and what yes. it's exactly. and fit for. But you, it has to be, you have to be very precise as to how it's going to get produced. Um, are, are the materials going to be sourced sustainably? Are the people that are going to be making it, are they going to produce in high volume, small volume, right? So I think all of this is also a decision that a designer needs to make at the very beginning. Also, exactly. Also, I remember that when I made um, the collections, I I was in partnership with the Receive Des Arts in Paris. It's a it's a really amazing um, place that you can find different type of materials, yeah. recycle materials that you can use in your design process. So you can one of the the things as well is to to go and visit all this type of people who are working the same process as you you know and and yeah, yeah. fabrics also people think that to be sustainable is buying far natural fibers this is one of the one of the tiny things but it's a huge other things because natural fi fibers is not just only a necessary a mean that you are sustainable so it's, mm -hmm. it's other process you have to um create from from scratch other type of um design process like uh for example scraps use scraps use recycled fabrics don't waste fabrics all these type of things for example you, you know this is just yeah, one of the examples of even if you have to dye the fabric how much water is it going to use right there's exactly. a lot of water usage that's also um, involved in the production of fashion so even just as simple as choosing the kind of dye like how many how many chemicals is it going to going to take so it's a very important um, decision to be making um, exactly yeah. And so now as you're teaching, like what would be like maybe three to five pieces of advice that you can teach, um, you know, the next generation of fashion designers to really design for change, you know, so that they can ensure that whatever they're doing from here on out is going to reform the fashion industry so that it's actually protecting our planet and the people. First, for me, the one of the most important thing is reduce and recycle. I think this is one of the biggest 
thing um, when I teach. I see many, many, many um, leftovers uh, on the floor. So mm. this is uh, this is a huge challenge for the students to you know to recognize and see. Look at this, you know. I have to make something. So basically, in my class, we use this uh, all these um, leftovers that they they don't use anymore for um, the pattern making classes and other classes. We used to bring on my class and we create new type of textile using this type of left, uh, leftovers. So this is one of the, the main things that I always um, say to my students, you have to recycle because you have to create. It's very easy to create when you have all the all the elements you when you have all the materials but what happened when you don't have um the rest of the materials what do you need to do for that and that for that from from that it comes the my magical word that it's innovation from yeah. that you can innovate recycling also we use um i always say it about um, upcycling. The upcycling is the new way to to being sustainable as well. You can buy um, pieces and you can recreate from that. Right. This is one of the the things that I always say to my to my students. And innovate. The thing is innovate. The key is to understand what is happening in the world, what is happening in your environment, and how you take advantage of that to create something uh, not new because everything is already made, but mm. how you can embrace that with a new way to understand maybe um, issues and uh, that affecting us so how can you embrace the uh the something that we already have to create yeah. something that we need you we yes. have to create something that just not only for fashion or for to be in trend you have to create something that for people that uh that and their necessity, sorry, like uh, you, ha we have to create for necessity. We have to embrace uh, what we need to start creating. This is part of the innovation. For yes, innovation. actually, that's also what I tell uh, young professionals, regardless of industry. It's like, you know what, like when you're thinking about your work, what problem are you trying to solve? Right, like instead of just designing something pretty or like trying to do something that is high, mm -hmm. of course we want to do everything with excellence, but mm -hmm. actually the best projects come when we are saying, okay, there's a problem. How can I use myself to solve that? How can I use my skill set to solve that? Exactly. So, so I like that you said that. Now, this might be a controversial next question. But do you think, you know, the fashion industry actually needs more fashion designers right now? Like, what, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, this question, you remind me a few years ago when I was talking with one of my colleagues, the same question, because, and he's a shirt director in FIT, and, and we were talking, and we conclude that we don't need more fashion designers, but don't um uh don't answer uh how you say that like uh, don't uh pretend that i'm saying like we don't need fashion designers we mm. need more creators we need yes. more creators when when i said fashion designer we only uh, uh, focus in designing um clothes right clothes accessories but the really thing is that we need more than that we need to create we need people who are committed co committed with the new fashion industry when we when i say new fashion industry i i said new ways to implement in the fashion industry like to be more conscious to be more realistic more transparent we need people who are um who can be director in the uh, fashion director in museums. We need people who, who wants other type of purpose, you know, like, uh, you know, like embrace different type of talents that they have to start yes. creating. So we, we don't need more people who create 
just only fashion and trends. We need yes. more people that can embrace this new fashion industry. That's yes, and really people in the industry who are going to design solutions. Because I think as a designer, you have exactly. the mind to create and design um, things that work together, right? So that could exactly. mean a dress, it could mean a different product, it could just mean like a different way to organize um, an entire organization. So it's really design thinking. So mm -hmm. the next question that I had is like, okay, so if you, if there are people there who are young designers right now who are saying, oh no, but I'm going to school for fashion design, am I doomed? Can you help us understand maybe what are the other ways that they can implement their skills as fashion designers into other careers in the sustainable fashion world. For example, we need educators. And when I say educators, it's not just to teach, you know, in a classroom. I think we educate the way we live, the way we work. And this is part of this, you know, we have to implement new idea, new forms. For example, if you're studying fashion designer, right it doesn't mean that at the end of the day you're gonna be a fashion designer maybe you realize that you're more uh you want to put on um, your talent educating or just creating branding for other companies right yeah. or consulting how you do that so first you have to understand yourself you have to understand what you want right and in in this moment that we're that we're experimenting right on this pandemia i think we have to take a moment to understand what we want and what is what is the seed that i want to you know to cultivate to start growing you know so yeah. you have to you have to understand what what you want and encourage and embrace this you can do for fashion designer, you can do um, consulting. You can do, because you, you asked me, right? How many things uh, or what other positions can fashion designer students can do? Consulting. It can be uh, creating other stuff. Like, look what are the necessities that your hometown have right now. So start yeah. creating something based outside of the comfort zone, you know? Yeah. Start um learning start reading about what is happening and yep. also um it was uh it was really funny because uh the uh, my colleague said we need people as well to can make socks you know <laughs> we don't have people who design socks so we need more than but people who create you know this is a an example right but we need people who can create more we just yeah. only need more creators yeah and i think fashion designers also will really make good decision makers and companies like maybe as a director of operations and operations manager even as a supply chain auditor because they know exactly what goes into designing a garment so like when they're trying to make decisions for a big company i feel like they will understand exactly what goes into making a garment and they will be able to really realistically say okay we need x amount of this in volume and they will know whether that's sustainable or not right exactly. so exactly exactly yeah. and also also i just want uh be um before i i forget also, if you are looking for more like sustainable, that's that's the way that we have to, you know, keep moving forward. So if you want to be a fashion designer, also, if you don't need to be a fashion designer after you study fashion design, you can implement your ideas, your vision, your values in a supply chain, in other type of professions, because if we only concentrate our sustainability in our design process, what happened with the rest of the things that we have to, to embrace as a sustainable, because sustainability, like I said before, is not just only to create a conscious collection. It's more than that. And how we can Im implement um, these life. ideas, right? If we only focus to be fashion designers, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. And now, um, now the show is called Grit and Glamour. So I want to ask you a little bit about the grit behind the glamour. So you know, maybe somebody's watching and they're like, you know what? No, I still want to start my collection. We're not saying it's impossible. Okay, we, we it was definitely a possibility to become mm -hmm. a fashion 
I just want to give you ideas of other ways that you can implement your skills in other areas of the industry and beyond. But um, I want to ask you to talk a little bit about some of the reality behind actually owning and launching a collection. I know that it's not an even task. So maybe you can share a little bit about, you know, the, the messiness behind the process of that. Yes, I think absolutely. I think if this is one of the most important things to create a collection. Um, before you start, you have to research. You have to understand what you want to do and how you want it to do. You know, this is the first thing. The first thing is that. The second thing is um, start planning uh, a business. Start writing a business plan of what you wanted to be as a fashion designer and how I wanted to create my fashion brand. This is very important. And be honest with, with yourself. Um, if you're good designing, so start with that designing. If you're good sewing or pattern making, start doing that. You know, it's start um, dividing what it this uh, your forte you know your forte your your skills your, your skills exactly and start basing your business plan on that also you have to understand your customers you have to understand who are your customer what age and everything so you have to start with that after that it will be more easy to you to create and to design, right? Also, start reaching about your reaching, uh, researching about uh, the materials. If you're in Latin America, for example, so start using the internet to understand who are making, you know, good textiles. Um, this is all based in supply chain right so you have to understand all this process to start creating a collection because collection is really wonderful it's really um it's one of the most beautiful things that fashion designers love because we're only creating but after that you there is a huge list of things that you have to know to understand and to implement so all these type of things also what type of clothing do you want? If it's women's wear, um, masculine, you know, um, all this type of stuff, it's really important. Or if you want to decide to design for accessories, women's wear, or just only, you know, based on create a slow fashion label. And what is the terminology that you need to know to create a slow fashion as well? So all it's all based on creating, uh, researching, educating, understanding your business, your core yeah. values, your your customers as well, your customer, and also the geographical, uh, what is the type of customers that you want? Maybe you want a uh, United States or you want certain area of France. So you have to understand what you wanted to do and how you wanted to do for that. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about, um, so we talk a lot, we've been talking a lot about environmental sustainability and all of that, but as a designer, you also have to think about financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the process of like making sure that you, you can invest in your, your collection? Yes, this is, I think this is one of the most important questions because um, for my fashion designer students, think that create a fashion label it's it's quite easy that you just you know create a fashion collection and boom we have a label right and it's more than that how can financially right i respond to create a fashion collection so basically i had it to to work in different type of areas to sustain my label right for example i educate i'm educator see so this is part of an incoming to create to continue yes. sustain my label so you have to understand that to to create a fashion label costs a lot of money 
Yeah. So in terms of you have to be your own investor. So that means that you have to find other ways to make money, not just exactly. on the label itself. Exactly. And maybe you have uh, an income for, for to create a, a sustain, uh, fashion label, but sometimes fashion brands don't resist because for what? Because to sustain, it's not just on a, just not only to have an income for to to create a fashion label. It's how you gonna sustain your fashion label. So yeah. you have to keep this in mind. And sometimes it takes years. And sometimes you have to embrace your your talent in other type of positions to start sustaining your um your creative you know, a brand. For example, in my case, I educate, I do seminars, I do, uh, I consult as well. This is part of being honest with myself and see, you know, create a fashion brand. It's not an easy, it, it took me more than 12 years and I'm keep moving forward, but you have to keep this in mind that sometimes it, it may, it might be take years to, to start growing so you have to be patient with yourself and you, with your company because it takes a lot of years and it takes a lot of efforts and it takes a lot of challenges. And it's not impossible. It's amazing because you grow during the process. This is one of the most beautiful things that you grow with, the, with your process. And also a start, I always say that, start making just one product. Just start creating just one product that maybe it can create an income and can create as uh you know increase and sustain you know your yeah. fashion brand so this is yeah. really important i love that you said that because it's not just about getting the money to make the collection it's about the long game right like, mm -hmm. how, like you said, how are you going to make sure that your brand has a life to live for years and years and um, it's so great that you can be transparent about the fact that you have other income streams that allow you to become your your brand's um best investor right we have to invest in our own projects sometimes mm -hmm. and that's what it takes so i know a lot of other creative people who might be excellent and wonderful but photographers or painters but they do have exactly. a job they have other ways of making their money so exactly. i think that that's really great advice um we're wrapping up soon but it's so wonderful to hear your story i hope that a lot of the folks tuning in today the next generation of fashion designers or people who are wanting to work in the industry in general i hope that i i'm sure actually that they've garnered so much insight from your knowledge and your expertise and uh, the transparency and honesty that you've shared with us today um i want to have um, my viewers also make sure that they know where to find you so where where can they find you and your work Ah, so thank you very much, Ruby. So you can find my work through my website. It's www.lemloren.com, L-E-M-L-O-R-E-N. And also in all social media. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me uh, with the same name, Lem Lauren, Twitter, Facebook. Or you can reach me out um, if you have any questions or collaborations. You can reach me out, Lemaris, um, period, Lorenzo at gmail.com. So I'll be very happy to see other, you know, people or young designers to have more questions. And also, before I forget, if you want to implement or you, if you want to create your own label, it's really important that you can have an experience in the fashion sector because this, it will help you to understand how the business a run how you can run a fashion brand right yes. and i i always suggest people students once and it's not bad because i was part of that as well but it's not bad if you want to to work with chanel Yves Saint Laurent, all these type of fashion houses but also if you want to create a fashion label i suggest to start with uh, working with independent fashion designers that have small brands to understand how they run their business. I think this is very important to understand and you can implement and 
those things that you think are are good for your you know to start your own business so you can implement those things the keywords that you've been um learning in the in that experience yes thank you so much lamars for joining us today and thank you. Well, we hope to have you back in paris soon yes and yes, for those yes. who tuned in today, I hope that you learned something. I'm sure you did because Lamar has just uh, shared a wealth of information. Um, but thank you for tuning in to Grit and Glamour. We broadcast here live every Saturday. And um, here's to your journey as fashion change makers. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If this episode inspired you, do share with a friend. Here's to all the grit behind the glamour. Until next time.